Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. So this video is going to be, well, part two of the last video I put out, which was, is Harley Davidson bullying YouTubers? That video was all about a million dollar bogan and Harley Davidson seemingly trying to silence some of his content because of maybe some issues with things that he had said. And I believe it was relative to some insensitive jokes that were made. It still has not been clarified yet. Now, my last video is pushing 20,000 views in a week, which is pretty crazy for my channel. It's also amassed over 200 subscribers, which uh, thank you to everybody who's uh, come along for the ride. I do appreciate it. And Million Dollar Bogan's video is pushing 100,000 views on the topic. Again, I'll link that in the description down below. Long and short of it, Harley Davidson reached out and threatened some sort of repercussions from the sounds of it for some content that he had produced. Now, as the saying goes, don't bring me problems, bring me solutions. I've put a lot of thought into this over the course of the last week. Now, the thing that I find on this YouTube community uh, to be the most prevalent issue with this whole million dollar bogan scenario between him and Harley Davidson is that I don't see any rules of the road really laid out for content creators like me and possibly you to follow to not necessarily be in trouble with the brand. And to be honest with you, a lot of people who are creating this content are just doing it because of their love of the brand and seemingly kind of look at this like Harley Davidson doesn't really appreciate it or value. Yeah, true, maybe Harley Davidson can do without these creators. They don't maybe necessarily need them, but what they don't need is all of these creators switching to another brand, also having the narrative that they're now anti-Harley Davidson and maybe pushing another brand a little bit more. So where maybe YouTubers are not selling motorcycles on a one-to-one -one basis with consumers, what they are doing is that when a consumer, potential customer leaves a dealership and is thinking about buying a bike, it's not the 10 phone calls from a salesman uh, pestering them to come back to the dealership that gets them back. It's the consuming of all of this content, hundreds of millions of views of independent content creators talking about their motorcycle, their opinion of the bike that somebody might be looking at buying. And it's those pieces of content, in my opinion, that get people back in the door and possibly even get them in the door to begin with. And I think Harley Davidson and any manufacturer out there needs to start embracing that idea. In this world of social media, it's not going away. It's only going to become more prevalent. And these creators are, are developing these very large audiences. So in my opinion, let's all work together and leverage this to the best of all of our abilities to uh, make it a mutually beneficial arrangement. Now, I'm not saying that Harley Davidson, in the case of Million Dollar Bogan, didn't have a reason to feel they needed to interject. I get it. They're a large corporation. They have a, a brand they need to protect, arguably one of the most valuable brand names in the world today that still exists. But the real problem lies within Harley Davidson itself, and that is They've set no ground rules. So when they feel the need to interject, it only comes off as being an aggressive posturing towards YouTubers. And as you know, Danny the Million Dollar Bogan puts it, that he doesn't want to uh, become a talking piece basically for this corporation. He's not paid by them. He's not going to be told what to say. I tend to, to say the same things. You can't control what somebody's saying if you haven't really done anything to develop a relationship or position yourself to be in uh, you know, a, maybe a position of control where you can reach out to somebody and say, hey, what you're saying isn't cool. So what is my solution to this problem? Well, the answer is really pretty simple. It's not nothing new, but with Harley Davidson being what they are, I think they can leverage this to a potential that no other company ever has in the history of brand ambassadors. That's right, a simple brand ambassador program that I've thought about and think they should just employ this and make it so valuable to the creators that the creators will respect Harley Davidson's wishes of, of maybe a narrative and uh, something that also still allows the content creators to be independent and not necessarily told what to say. Now, let me clarify what this ambassador program to me is, and then I'll get into more importantly what it is not. What it is is uh, some points here I've made, a relationship builder, it helps support creators. It's a social liability manager. So it gives uh, Harley Davidson a way, a one-to-one -one connection with creators where if they need to interject, they can do it and they have a little bit of a, a program geared around doing these things. Ground rules have been set. They can reach out to creators. It's a great way to uh, bridge that relationship. This can also bring some of the dealership social media stuff into corporate liability as opposed to individual dealership liability. One thing in my honest opinion that I find with, say, Scottsdale Harley-Davidson, which is 
basically I call it the Walt Disney World of, of dealerships. It's enormous. The place is, is huge. They don't really seem to embrace social media content creators around there. And my guess is because it's owned by the guy who created GoDaddy. He doesn't need the liability of somebody like me who he doesn't necessarily know saying or doing something stupid that jeopardizes his business with Harley Davidson. I understand that. So a program, an ambassador program would put a little bit of the onus more on Harley Davidson and maybe allow these dealerships to loosen up uh, their mindset around that where they're not in fear of retribution from Harley Davidson, which is seemingly what happened with Million Dollar Bogan and G Long Harley Davidson. Now what this program isn't and cannot be is some sort of censorship vehicle. Now sure, there can be policies in place that prevent you from saying some certain things, and, and I'll get into that in a moment, but what it cannot be is censorship of constructive criticism, critical content of the brand, or even uh, honest opinions that maybe Harley Davidson might not appreciate. I don't think they have any business getting involved in trying to clean any of that up because as soon as you start trying to run all of everything everybody says through the filter of a corporation, it's no longer independent content. And uh, it just looks more like corporate polished messaging and it provides no value to the brand and it provides no value to the content creators. It's just kind of a lose-lose situation. Uh, I think that would be a huge uh, misunderstanding of the entire intent behind an ambassador program. Now, the idea is that you create such a desirable program that aspiring content creators are going to look at the rules and try to follow those rules because maybe you say, hey, you can't be a member of this program if you violated these rules prior to coming into it. It's all going to be taken into consideration. But in order to do these things, you need to make the benefits so desirable that people want to be in it. And I do think you need to have a barrier to entry. Maybe at first you make it 100,000 subscribers and then back it down to 50 and then back it down to 10 as you develop that program. But in all reality, I think you do have to have some sort of barrier to entry uh, so that you know the people that you're getting that have developed an audience and more importantly, have kind of identified their character prior to entering such a valuable program. So what is the value to this program? Number one, dealer access. Dealer access to me is probably one of the most desirable things that we're all looking for. I know personally content creators that are trying to get into their local dealerships some dealerships embrace it, some do not. I think some of these owners have decided that they just don't want to have the liability of some content creator saying or doing something dumb that could jeopardize their livelihood with the brand. It makes complete sense. So if Harley Davidson sort of brings that dealership access in-house and basically tells all these dealerships, we will provide media passes or ambassador passes to the people that we have deemed uh, ambassadors or that have been entered into the program, there definitely would have to be some conversation with the dealers on how that process might look. And now if you're not a brand ambassador, the beauty of it is if somebody goes in there and just picks up a GoPro and starts filming saying all kinds of nonsense, Harley Davidson now has a program where they can say, he's not in our ambassador program. We don't even know that guy. We don't condone his, his content. And we're going to ask that he doesn't come to the dealerships anymore because we don't appreciate uh, the level of humor or content that he has created. So if you control the dealership access and provide a little more access to, to the ambassador program, well you then also uh, create kind of that controlled environment that you're looking for. And it's just a smart way to, to do that. Another thing I think could be incredibly valuable is an extended demo days for ambassadors. So when that truck comes in town, maybe allow the creators to spend a little more time with the bike. Give them an hour instead of 15 minutes. Give them two hours instead of 15 minutes. It's just difficult to do a comprehensive review, obviously, of anything within 15 minutes. Now, another thing I think they could do is maybe differentiate two different levels of social media events, uh, maybe a gold level, silver level type of thing where think product launches for gold level. So when they announce their new products every year, you put everybody that's in the ambassador program into a lottery. So for anybody with 100 plus subscribers, uh, they're entered into a lottery and anybody with five to 100,000 subscribers is entered into a separate lottery and you take 10 seats from each. So now you have... Uh, 20 creators, something in that range, however many seats you have available, open up that lottery so people can actually come to the events and share them on social media. Uh, then maybe have silver events where uh, maybe riot events with the Pan America coming out, maybe have an extended week long thing here in Arizona somewhere where content creators on their own dime can come out and ride that, that Pan America for three, four hours and really get a good feeling of what that bike is so they can produce content around it. The content is available then on YouTube, everybody wins. 
Another point of value would be maybe a point of contact within this ambassador program. If you have over X amount of subscribers, you get a, a personal contact that you can call. Maybe that contact is responsible for everybody over 100,000 subscribers, whatever the case may be. And then maybe for smaller creators, just a general email that they can reach out to for questions, concerns, things of that nature. Uh, just give people some means of developing a relationship with the people in Milwaukee to, you know, have that point of contact. I think affiliate sales could be huge for parts. I don't think you could really have affiliate sales for sales of bikes because I've mentioned this before. Somebody might watch my video. They might watch 50 other videos, go into a dealership. And if they're asked who sent them there from social media, it could be a whole bunch of creators. So uh, maybe do have some sort of way to get some sort of code or credit. So after you sell X amount of bikes, maybe you just get bikes at cost at that point. Some sort of a relationship thing there. I don't know how to work that out. Again, a lot of this stuff is just thoughts in my, my head. Now, the whole purpose of this program, again, is to generate value for everybody involved. The content creators get access to things they've never had access to before, and Harley-Davidson gets access to the content creators. So if something is said that is objectionable, there's a relationship that's sort of been developed there. Hopefully, maybe that content creator has met somebody at one of these events previously and knows who that person is. So now if you get a phone call from somebody who you've met before, somebody you've talked to on the phone before, it's quite a bit different than just getting a phone call from corporate who says, hey, if you don't do this thing, we're coming after everybody that we possibly can. And then that turns into the narrative on YouTube as it is today. I don't think that's smart business for anybody, to be honest with you. So the rules, in my opinion, can be pretty cut and dry. I don't think it has to apply to all of your content everywhere. I think they could just say, if anything is taking place inside a dealership at a Harley Davidson event, anywhere that our product appears, you need to make sure that you're following these rules. No discussion relative to race, uh, religion, sexual orientation, uh, gender expression, weight, uh, or physical or, or mental ability. I, I think you just keep it to the basics. So then the question becomes, how do you handle misconduct in this program? There's got to be some sort of recourse if something goes wrong. I think you set those rules incredibly transparent. So if the rules are set on the, uh, on the table, there is no ability for somebody to come out or all of these content creators, as you see now, coming out to defend a creator if the rules were just broken. If you know the rules of the road and you break them, well, then you're responsible for the repercussions that come with that. And I think that for the most part, people are okay with that. So I think you have a gross misconduct and arguably what Million Dollar Bogan did could be that. Maybe the, the idea that you're making insensitive jokes, whether it's jokes or seriousness, and the brand says it can't happen at sponsored events, inside dealerships, anything that the, the, the brand is providing to you, you cannot make these jokes or comments. They're off limits. Gross misconduct, one strike, you're out. Maybe pending some sort of further review uh, where you can appeal it to uh, a panel of Harley Davidson representatives and maybe even a panel of people that are in the ambassador program. Let the people who are part of it be a part of it as opposed to just being in it. Then you have a major misconduct, maybe a three strikes you're out kind of thing, where if you make a bad joke and the brand is just simply visible, if I have my Harley Davidson jacket behind me, even wearing a t-shirt, whatever the rules might be, you say, if you're an ambassador and you have the brand visible, you're in your garage, the bike's behind you, you're moto vlogging out on your own, you say some things that the brand doesn't appreciate and they strike you with a misconduct. Again, three strikes, maybe you're out at that point. Then they can have like a minor misconduct. So even if the brand wants to say, look, we are not going to be stuck to only these rules, there are things that may come up in the future that today are fine, tomorrow are not, and we might issue a minor misconduct and maybe have a little bit looser of a way of handling that general perceived misconduct. But again, make it very transparent. Maybe even notify all of the creators that, hey, we had this issue just so everybody is aware going forward. We did issue a minor misconduct. We would appreciate it if the people in our ambassador program didn't say X, Y, Z. Thank you very much. End of story. Now, a part of this whole program in general, again, is you make it so valuable and desirable to be in that people are not, when misconducts happen and Harley Davidson decides that they're going to lay the smack down, that these creators that are out there don't turn into ravaging wolves, which in my opinion is kind of what you have right now, is creators are just feeling very targeted. So if you have such a valuable and desirable program, very transparent, 
You, you notify people when somebody has violated one of these misconduct uh, rules. You then help control the narrative that people don't just run and start making all of their content about what this person did and how Harley Davidson responded when the rules were super clear to begin with. And that's kind of what's happening right now with Million Dollar Bogan. Harley Davidson has no rules of the road. They just decided to make one up at the moment as far as an independent content creator went. They enforced it. Content creators went insane. And this is kind of what you now have is this is the narrative. That's a problem for the brand. I don't think they can say it isn't because my video is pushing 20,000 views, Million Dollar Bogan's pushing 100,000 views, and there's countless videos that have been made on this topic. I think that's what you need to stop from happening. So transparency is ultimately the only way to do that. In 2020, social media is not going away. Companies need to get smarter at how they handle these things. And I think that creating programs that helps you manage those relationships is simply the way to do it. I think Harley Davidson should not only do it, but they should become the poster child to every major brand out there about how you execute these ambassador programs as opposed to currently right now, which is sort of ignoring the entire platform in general. I don't think it's a smart business uh, play for them to pretend like YouTube isn't an important part of their, their business model because it just simply is. So with that being said, guys, again, thank you very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. To all the new subscribers that jumped on, again, thank you very much. It means the world to me. Uh, I spend a lot of time and energy on this channel and uh, the subscribers. Just it's nice to know that people are watching. So again, thank you very much. I'll see you guys next time.